सर लेट मी म्यूट माय स्क्रीन हेलो यस सो आई कैन सो द वॉइस इज ऑडिबल यस सर इट इज ऑडिबल या दैट्स वन इज ओके सो डिफरेंट रिजिम्स ऑफ द फुल वायलिंग दैट वन इज द डीटी एक्सेस दैट वन इज कॉल्ड एज एक्स एक्सिस रिप्रेजेंट द दैट्स वन इज द टीएस माइनस टी सैचुरेशन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज द डीटी एक्सेस दैट इज कॉल्ड एज अ so excess temperature and y axis represent that is the uh, or so heat flux that is so in the previous classes we discuss about that is okay so you will discuss here that is the what is the natural convection okay so this is a natural first that is in the pool boiling first one is the natural convection will be taking place bubbles do not form on the heating surface until the liquid is heated few degrees above the A saturation temperature about two to two six degrees of water. Here is show that means two to six degrees. So in this excess temperature, so whatever the the heat transfer that is by the due to the a natural convection only. So liquid is slightly superheated. Okay, liquid is slightly superheated in this case. That is called as a metastable state. What we call. the fluid motion in this mode of boiling is governed by the natural convection okay so that's one is uh, we we'll discussed in the previous classes and heat transfer from the heating surface to the fluid is by the a natural convection only okay so that's happening in the natural convection so that is called as a, so natural convection boiling that means okay what happens certain is a nucleate boiling okay this is a second regime of the pool boiling what is called as a nucleate boiling the bubbles form at an increased rate okay at an increasing number of nucleation sites okay so uh, starting that one is the uh, bubbles formation will be taking place okay here so you see that one is the graph here that one is nucleate boiling so this is a nucleate boiling from a to c is called as a, a nucleate boiling that one is understand means that one is graph is linearly increases from a to b a to c okay a to c through b so that is called as a, a nucle in the nucleate boiling that it is okay the point b okay so here in the nucleate boiling so that one is the so this is the second region of the pool boiling second a and second b understand second a b means that one is in the second a b okay that one is the a to b okay second uh, second is that one is called as a isolated bubbles isolated bubbles means that one is only at the initial stages small small bubbles are coming out okay if the excess temperature is increases heat flux is also increases that one is from a to b small small bubbles also come that one is it will be move up so that is called as a isolated bubbles that one is so that's happening in the nucleate boiling a uh, region of the second a part that is first part of the nucleate boiling then again the further after the further heating will be taking place the curve will be moving from b to c this region is called as that one is the numerous continuous columns of vapor in the liquid means that one is more number of bubbles will be created if the more number of the bubbles will be created it will be move to the surface as that one is move to the surface as okay bubbles are rise to the surface as if the excess of the temperature is 10 to 30 degree celsius excess temperature 10 to 30 degree celsius okay so this is in the case of the nucleate boiling that one is so that one is the uh, the uh, the picture you can see here that one is the how the nucleation nucleate boiling will be taking place here the bubbles how that one is uh, moving to the surface here taking place that one is there so you can see here that one is okay so then here next one is called as a nucleate boiling region ap is stirring and agitation caused by the entrainment of the liquid to the heater surface understand i give an example of that one is a heater put into the a water okay then it will be start that one is the bubbles will be coming that is understand that is called as a nucleation of the bubble that is from a to b okay after some times of that one is a heating water more and more number of the bubbles will be coming that one is understand okay so that is b to c that one is in the graph here okay 
B to C here that it is okay means resin A to B the stirring and hesitation caused by the entrainment of the liquid to the heater surface is primarily responsible for the increase the heat transfer coefficient what is the increase the heat transfer coefficient H okay so this A to B is primarily responsible understand primarily responsible for the increase the heat transfer coefficient that one is in the region A B on the in the region A to B the large heat fluxes obtainable in this region means that one is the heat flux okay that one is the optimum large heat flux will be obtainable in this region are caused how it will be obtained are caused by the combined effect of liquid entrainment and evaporation okay that is due to the liquid entrainment liquid entrainment and evaporation large amount of the heat fluxes will be obtained in this uh, in the region of a to b that one is understand okay so that's uh, after the point b okay after the point b where that is after the point b here yeah, the point c understand point c okay the heat flux increases at the lower rate with increasing dirty axis heat flux there is a small variation of the heat flux what it indicates that is there is a small variation of the heat fluxes so with the increasing that one is called as a data uh, 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 excess temperature and reaches the maximum point c okay maximum point c that one is so the heat fluxes which is available at point c means that is heat fluxes which is at point c are called as a, a critical flux okay so discuss in the a previous classes the heat flux at this point is called as a critical heat flux or maximum heat flux and it is the prime engineering importance in design of any play suppose if you are using the plan, pan understand sorry the pan which is for the water heating or boiling for uh, of the uh, you, if you want to make an omelet or make a roti or make a chapati that one is you are using the pan and the gases how they design the they design with the value of the crit, crit, critical heat flux only understand so they taken into the critical heat flux for the particular so what is called as a, a material so after that one they will design the which material required for that one is the some amount of the critical flux and that's also depending upon the a material that one is understand okay so based on that one is they design the what is the pan okay so that one is the next region is called as a, a transition region tan transition boiling that one is understand so when delta dt or delta t excess excess temperature that is called as increases point c increase the first point c the heat flux decreases understand heat flux decreases this is because a large fraction of the heater surface is covered by wafer film understand so in the essay classes we discuss about that why the film is the heat flux okay critical heat fluxes after the critical point c is decreases because of that one is the on the heater surfaces the vapor film will be formed vapor film be formed which is act as an insulation why it is act as an insulation because of the thermal conductivity of the vapor film is very very less if you can go through the a data handbook so you can observe that one is the thermal conductivity of the vapor is very very less that one is because of the very less thermal conductivity of the vapor film the critical heat flux will be calm down in the boiling operation that one is understand so in the transition boiling regime in the transition boiling regime both the nucleate and film boiling partially occurs is a very important because of transition period understand because of the transition period so that one is liquid is converted into the vapor understand liquid is converted into the vapor here that one is you can see this diagram liquid is converted into the vapor that one is so bo both the nucleate and film boiling is partially occurs here in this one okay 
So that is called as uh, that's a diagrammatically we show we can show that one is in the from C to D here that one is. So this is the transient pyrite that in transition boiling. This uh, C to D is called as a transition boiling that one is. Okay, next one is called as a plumb boiling. Understand? Pay the, so here we can saw that one is the point D. Point D is called as laid, okay, laden prose point, okay. Laden prose point is a point where that one is the heat flux, minimum heat flux we can obtain. Understand, minimum heat flux you can obtain that one is, okay. That is called as a laden prose point, okay. So this one is after the transition period, the film boiling occurs. Understand, film boiling occurs. So after the point D, again the heat flux, you can see here, okay. You can see here that one is the after the point D, okay. After the transition period, okay. Again the heat fluxes will be increases. Again the heat fluxes will be increases. That's why in the film boiling, in the film boiling, the what is called as the heat fluxes will be increases beyond the point D here, that one is. It's beyond the point D, the heater surface is completely covered by the continuous stable vapor film. Okay, yes, uh, is a, my voice is audible? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. My, my voice Hello. is audible. So, uh, so, uh, yes, sir, it is audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, this one is beyond the point D. Heater surface is completely covered by the continuous stapler, stable vapor film. Understand? Hence, that one is uh, uh, here. The radiations will be taking place here. Whatever the heat transfer is in the film wiring, it is the uh, combination of the convection and radiations that one is okay in the film boiling is a make it important that one is in the film boiling the heat transfer occurs due to the combination of the what is called as the uh, convection and the radiations that one is because of the stable film okay stable vapor film formed okay there is no part of that one is the the further convection will not happening that one is okay so after that one radiation heat transfer that is due to the radiations only that one is point d where the heat flux reaches the minimum value is called as laden prost point understand the presence of the vapor film between the heater surface between the heater surface and the liquid is responsible for the low heat transfer rates in the film boiling region. If it is any, a, that one is a low heat transfer occurs, understand? That is due to the a stable film, which is formed on the surface of the uh, vessel or any that one is the uh, material that one is, okay? The heat transfer rate increases with increases access temperature due to the radiations to the liquid, okay? What I discussed is that the radiation heat transfer occurs in the film boiling. It is not only radiation uh, heat transfer, it is a combination of the, what is called as a convection heat transfer rate and radiation heat transfer will be taking place in the film boiling that one is, understand? Okay, so how to calculate we can, so they are given in the a data handbook also that one is, okay? So this is the, we can clear, they given the clear, uh, clear picture, the film boiling here, that one is the, how that one is the, uh, here, this is called as a vapor, understand? How the heat transfer will be taking place, that one is the, and uh, how that one is the, in the film boiling, that one is the heat flux will be increases, again, that one is the, so they show that one is, okay? So that one is the, what is the burnout phenomenon? Okay. A burnout phenomenon that is happening in the, what is that one is it? the burnout phenomenon, okay? Burnout phenomenon that is cut as a E, point E. In the graph we shown here, that one is cut as a E is cut as a, a burnout phenomenon, okay? The sudden jump in the temperature. Suppose that one is the surface temperature, understand? 
surface temperature is around 500 degree Celsius. Okay, so uh, suppose that one is the here. Uh, what is called as the a surface temperature is the a 500 degree Celsius. Then saturation temperature of water is 100 degree Celsius. 500 minus 100, it will become 400 degree Celsius. Excess temperature is the 400 degree. Excess temperature is of 400 degree Celsius. Then heat transfer, much and much heat transfer will be occur certainly. And that's one is if the surface temperature is of 500 degree, it is not a good for the a metal also. Understand metal also that one is okay. There may be chances of that one is the burnout will be taking place. Okay, so that is called as a, a burnout point. Okay, so that one is sudden jump. Okay, in the temperature, sudden jump in the this is a Q maximum. This is the so that one is the bypass part of the boiling curve, and this is called as a sudden drop in the temperature, then what is called as the again, that one is the, what is called as a burnout point will be occur certain is, understand? Here this is the Q maximum, and this one is the D point D is called as a Q minimum, that one is, understand? A typical boiling process, burnout phenomenon, burnout phenomenon is a typical boiling process, does not follow the boiling curve beyond the point C, okay? Does not, it shows uh, that one is the research uh, uh, said that it does not follow the a boiling curve. Does not follow the boiling curve beyond the point C. It may be sudden drop of the temperature also occurs. It may be sudden drop of the heat flux also occurs. Certainly, again that one is the after the point D. That one is the heat fluxes will be raising that one. When the power applied to the heated surface, means that one is the a power apply means certain is the supplying the heat. Understand when the power applied to the heating surfaces exceeds the value at point C, even slightly, the surface temperature increases suddenly. Surface temperature increases suddenly to point E. Understand point E. Understand okay. If the delta excess temperature is increases, understand then it will reach us the point E and so that one is called as a burnout phenomenon will be happen. When the power is reduced gradually starting from point E to the cooling curve. So in the figure, tend to, that one is in the given figure with a sudden drop in the excess temperature when the point T is reached that one is. Okay, next that one is heat transfer correlation. Okay, so all of you understand that one is what is the burnout here? So this is called as the burnout where that one is the melting of the metal will be maybe chances of taking the places. Understand? So due to the excess temperature. So that is called as the burnout here that one is. Here is any questions? Are you audible? So I am audible here, that one is? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah, that's one. Okay. So after the point C, that one is, uh, there will be the heated surface exceeds the value of the point C, even slightly surface temperature increases suddenly to the point E. The point E is called as a, a burnout point that is. Okay, these are we discussed uh, okay, in the previous class also. That one. Then heat transfer correlations. So we need to solve the numericals, understand? If we need to solve the numericals, we need to know about that one is the correlations in the pool boiling, understand? The boiling regimes different considerably in their characteristics. So that's one is the first one is a natural conduction boiling, second one is a nucleate boiling, and third one is called as a transient transition period, and the fourth one is called as a film boiling. That one is understand. So that's one is the this regimes difference considerably in their characteristics. Different heat transfer relations need to be used for the different regimes. That one is okay for different boiling regimes that one is. So in the natural convection boiling regime, heat transfer rates can be accurately determined using the natural convection relations. Understand? In the natural convection boiling, so heat transfer rate, so that can be accurately determined using the natural convection relations, that's okay? So this is the, uh, there is no derivations, okay? Don't bother about that one is, uh, here the formulas are the things you can directly get from the a data handbook here that one okay so there is no that one is the derivations for these things that one is so heat flux 
in the natural convection okay so if you go through the that's a uh, uh, page number 148 in the data and book okay make it that page number 148 so boiling and condensation boiling that's what it is so you can get that is the heat transfer rate in the so heat flux calculation of the heat flux in the what is called as a, a natural convection it will be okay so this one is the heat transfer correlations in the pool boiling that is in the nucleate boiling that means okay so this one is uh, here in the natural convection directly you can calculate the q is equal to h into uh, what is called as a ts minus t saturation that is using that equations you can calculate that okay all of you agree this one is so h is a heat transfer coefficient understand so q that one is a small q small q is called as a heat flux in the natural convection understand so the small q is equal to h okay into ts minus t saturation using that equation so heat transfer rate in the natural convection boiling you can calculate that one is i am okay yes yes sir yes that one is note down that point in the natural convection boiling regions heat transfer rates can be accurately determined using the natural convection relation what is the natural convection relation the small q is equal to h into ts minus t saturation using that equation you can calculate the what is called as a heat transfer in the natural convection okay okay in the in case of pool boiling okay next heat transfer correlations in the pool boiling that is in the nucleate boiling understand nucleate boiling okay second region of the that's a curve that one is a okay boiling curve okay uh, no general theoretical relations for the heat transfer in the nucleate boiling region is available important thing that one is no general theoretical relations for the heat transfer in the nucleate boiling regions is available experimental base correlations are used this is called as what the equation we are giving that one is called as a experimental base correlations that one is understand this is the experimental base correlations that one is which is available in the data handbook that one is the page number 148 you can use this correlations to calculate the heat transfer rate in the nucleate boiling okay so from the data and book okay the rate of heat transfer strongly depends on the nature of nucleation how bubbles will be formation understand rate of heat transfer understand q capital q okay rate of heat transfer strongly depends on the nature of nucleation and type okay and what type of and conditions of the heated surface saturation is conditions of the heated surface saturation is a widely used correlations proposed in 92155 what is called as rosenow okay rosenow this is a scientist name so he that's when is the men so made the correlations by so that's when is the uh, experimental study by uh, from the experimental study that one is okay so this correlations which is available in the data handbook uh, and in case of the nucleate by how the heat transfer will be taking place that is a heat flux so you can use this equation here that one is, okay here i am asking the question that one is, is a very important so is there any um, geometrical dimensions uh, uh, are you identifying here in this equation yes any uh, geometrical yes mm, geometrical dimensions g is called as a gravitational x uh, okay g is called 9.81 this one is the density okay density of the liquid and density of the vapor sigma is called as a surface tension of the water and mu is yeah and mu is called as a dynamic viscosity of the fluid hfg is called as a what is called as a a latent heat okay cpl and csf that one is can you can from the data handbook it is also not depend upon the what is called as the uh, material of any that one is delta is delta t is called as a excess temperature hfg is called again that one is called as a latent heat okay 
and PR is called as a prandalamar. Is there any geometrical dimensions here they mentioned? Yes, can you answer for this one? Is there any geometrical dimension, length, diameter, or anything? That one is the notation is there? So, huh? no, sir, no, line. no, means uh, is the nucleate boiling the heat flux? Okay, the formation of the heat flux it shows that does not depend upon the uh, dimension of the surfaces, means that one is the properties of the material. Understand properties of the material, then these are called as the properties of. Okay, liquid. What is that one is the water, not the properties of the material. Understand? Okay, so these are called as the uh, properties of the water at what temperature? Yes, boiling temperature, saturation temperature. That's what is called as a hundred degrees Celsius. We have to note down the, the parameters, okay? This is the properties of water at 100 degrees Celsius. That's what is all this parameter. So from the data handbook, so you can get this one is. These are not properties of the metal surface or any metal that one is. Hence, we are not considering that one is the, so that one is the, these properties from the metal, these properties from the a, a liquid properties that one is. Why? Because of QS, okay, does not depend upon the uh, surface parameters of the, what is the, any surface parameter, any dimensions of the uh, material which is used for the boiling that one is. All of you okay for this one is? Yes? Yes, guys? Yes, sir. Yes. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, because these things, uh, this uh, heat fluxes which is calculated in the nucleate boiling, not depend upon the material properties. Understand? Hence, that's why we are taking the liquid properties here. So, mark it important in the calculations. You have to note down the uh, properties of water at hundred degrees Celsius from the data handbook. Okay, so you are this are very important. Okay, next come to here. Here, heat transfer correlations in the full boiling, nucleate boiling. The value in the this equation can be used for many geometry, for any geometry. Understand? It does not depend upon any geometry. Understand? Because of the geometry dimension is not there. Since it is found that rate of heat transfer during the nucleate boiling is essentially independent of the geometry and orientation of the heated surfaces. Okay? Orientation of the heated surfaces that one is. So that's why this equation can be used for the any geometry. It may be cylinder or it may be sphere or it may be plate or any geometry that one or it may be square that one is. Understand? Okay. So it's a very important. So go through this point and correlation is applicable to clean and relatively smooth surfaces. So these are the assumptions. Okay. Make it important that one is the correlation, whatever the heat flux. Okay. This correlation. Okay. This correlation. Okay. This Correlation is applicable to clean and relatively smooth surfaces. Okay, next point is error of the heat transfer rate for the given excess temperature is 100% as that one is. Understand? Okay, error of the heat transfer rate, okay, for the given excess temperature is 100% as. And next point is called as error of the excess temperature for given heat transfer rate for the heat transfer rate, okay? So given heat transfer rate for the heat transfer rate and by the 30, so that is by the 30 percent is only. Error for the excess temperature for the given heat transfer rate, understand, for the given heat transfer rate, for the heat transfer rate, okay? For the heat transfer rate, 
So, and by the 30 percent, that is for the a 30 percentage error will be there. That one is understand. Okay, next one is what is the meaning of the critical heat flux after the nucleate boiling? That one is called as a critical heat flux. That one is the definitions of the critical heat flux. How to calculate the heat fluxes? Understand so which this equation is also available in the data and book. Note on that one is how to calculate that one is called as a critical heat flux. Critical heat flux is called as a maximum heat flux which is available at the point C in the graph. Okay, which is okay. So whenever the excess temperature of the excess temperature will be increases, the heat flux will be increases. So that it will reach us the point that a point so it means beyond that point the heat flux will not increase us it will be far down okay that point is called as a critical heat flux that one is understand or maximum heat flux okay this equation is given by that one is the ss uh, uh, kutate lads in the russian in 1948 and n juve in the united states in the 1958 so that's an Critical heat flux or that is a maximum heat flux can be calculated C H F G rho V so into sigma G. Sigma is called as a surface tension. I think you may know the what is the meaning of the surface tension. Okay. G into rho L minus rho V. Rho L is called as a density of the liquid that is called as a water, and the sun is a rho V is called as a density of the vapor. So divided by rho v square so into rest to one upon four understand okay so these parameters you have to note down the when the temperature of the water at is 100 degrees celsius this parameter you have to note down and calculate the critical heat flux here that one is where c is the constant whose value depends on the heating geometry here understand heated geometry but generally is about 0.15. Generally is about 0.15 that one is. So the critical heat flux, we can, that one is CHF. The critical heat flux is independent of the fluid heating surfaces, means that one is the surface of the any material, okay? So combination as well as the viscosity, thermal conductivity, so viscosity and thermal conductivity and specific heat of the liquid, specific heat of the liquid. Means certain is the critical heat flux does not depend upon the viscosity of the fluid, thermal conductivity of the fluid and specific heat of the any fluid or liquid that one is understand. So by equation, by using this equation, here the equation is given, understand. So by using this equations, you come to know about that one is the critical flux is not, does not depend upon the, what is the viscosity, thermal conductivity and specific heat of the liquid that one is, understand. This is a very important. Then critical heat flux, critical heat flux increases with the pressure up to about one third of the critical pressure. Understand? So increases with the pressure up to up to about one third of the critical pressure and then start to decrease and becomes zero at the critical pressure. Zero at critical pressure. Understand? Okay. So here that one is the critical heat flux is proportional to HFG. What is the HFG here? HFG is called as a latent heat. Understand? HFG is called as a latent heat of your operations. Understand? Means that one is the enthalpy. So that one is the, okay, enthalpy. Okay, that one is the, uh, I think you know that one is what is the enthalpy. Okay. So this one is called as the HFG is called as a latent heat. This CHF is by the equations of the critical heat flux. You come to know about that one is the CHF, critical heat flux is proportional to HFG and large maximum heat fluxes. Okay, whenever the HFG latent heat increases, the maximum heat critical flux we can get that one is and can be obtained using the fluid with the large enthalpy of vaporization such as a water that one is. Understand? So this is the 
how this is the information about the critical heat flux saturation okay it does not depend upon the what is called as the viscosity thermal conductivity and specific heat of the liquid that it is understand okay this is directly proportional to the hfg understand when the hfg that is called as the latent heat of the fluid is increases then critical heat flux is also increases that one is so this is the case here that one is okay next one is called as minimum heat flux where the minimum heat flux will be occurs that one is minimum heat flux occurs at the point d here understand what is this point leyden prost point understand so this one is the leyden prost point the minimum heat flux which is occur at the leyden prost point is of the practical interest okay practical interest because it represents the lower limit for the heat flux in the film boiling regimes this regimes is called as a film boiling regime certain is it is a practical interest okay why it is a practical interest means sometimes we can take the value of the critical heat flux only after that one is no need to take that one is sometimes so if you want to again go for the uh, research so that one is so we need to note on that one is the a minimum heat flux that one is that's why they are taking that is the practical since it represents the lower limit of the heat flux in the film boiling regimes so this equation is derived by the joubert so for the following expressions for the minimum that one is a heat flux for the large horizontal plate that one is so he given the this equation for the a minimum heat flux that one is okay so this equation is also available in the data handbook that one is understand page number 148 so you can get this one is the what is called as a, a minimum heat flux that one is okay in the almost all the numericals so they ask up to a critical heat flux only okay so uh, because i solved the four or five problems that one is the uh, which is asked in the examination so up to that one is the critical heat fluxes so they can ask that one is okay so the relation what is called as a minimum heat flux the relation above can be error by 50 percentage or more okay relation so uh, above can be in error by the 50 percentage more okay so that's why still research is going on here that one is the, uh, in this the minimum heat flux that one is that's why they mentioned that one is the practical interest since it is represent the lower limit of the heat fluxes in the film film boiling regimes that one is okay then film boiling so that one is the uh, so nusselt number okay in the film boiling film boiling the heat transfer in the film boiling heat transfer taking place only due to the combination of what is called as convection and radiation certain is okay we will discuss that one is so in that cases what is called as a nusselt number nusselt number is that is called as a convection divided by the uh, conduction that is the uh, that is called as a nusselt number that one is okay so this is a dimensionless number understand this is the dimensionless number. it doesn't have this one is we can calculate this one is the h convection into d divided by kb okay so that one is the k is called as a thermal conductivity of the vapor okay v suffix v is represent the vapor h so that one is called as a convection so the convection heat transfer coefficient of the convection and h d is called as a diameter of the cylinder or, or sphere understand so film boiling so nusselt number for the film boiling on the horizontal cylinder or sphere of diameter d so we can identify okay so this c this also available in the data and book where c is called as the 0.62 for cylinder and c is equal to 0.67 for the sphere so this value we can get in the data and book at high surface temperature typically about 300 degrees celsius okay so what we discussed in the previous and today's if the excess temperature is above 300 degrees celsius then in from that only the film boiling will be taking place understand at high surface temperature typically about 300 degrees celsius heat transfer across the vapor by the radiation becomes significant understand 
when the radiation heat transfer will be significant then so that is the when the the sir high surface temperature is above 300 degree celsius understand above 300 degrees surface 300 degrees celsius in that cases whatever the heat transfer will be taking place that is called as a radiation heat transfer that's why they told that radiation becomes significant and needs to be considered need to be considered in the film boiling the radiation heat transfer also consider that one is okay so and moreover so that one is the here they given equation h raised to 4 by 3 is equal to h convection 4 by 3 plus h radiation so into h so 1 by h raised to 1 by 3 that one is two mechanism of the heat transfer so that one is called as a radiation and convection okay so in the film volume what i told that one is the convection is also happening as well as the radiation is also happening so this so two mechanism of the heat transfer adversely affect the each other causing the total heat transfer to be less than their sum okay then h radiation how to calculate the h radiation this is by this value understand so epsilon okay sigma t s raised to minus 4 minus t saturation raised to 4 divided by t s minus t saturation certainly okay using this one so you can calculate the what is called as a h radiation certainly so what is this so this epsilon sigma t s raised to 4 minus t saturation raised to 4 this is q q in case of that is called as what is that one is the radiation heat transfer q divided by what is called as temperature difference it will use the heat transfer coefficient of the radiation heat transfer coefficient of the radiations you can get that one is okay so you can use this uh, heat transfer coefficient of the radiation you can calculate the what is called as the h bar raised to 4 by 3 or if you calculate this h bar raised to 4 by 3 here you can calculate the result number that means understand okay so these are available in the data handbook that means okay how to announce the heat transfer in the pool boiling okay pool boiling having a four regimes certain is the what is first one is called as a nucleation boiling and second one is called as the a natural connection first boiling, the boiling and uh, third second one is the nucleation boiling third one is called as the transition boiling and fourth one is called as the film boiling that one. but i want to so that's one is uh, i want to know about that one is the how heat transfer will be enhanced in the full boiling that one is okay so that one is the here with the clear pictures you can come to know about that one rate of heat transfer in the nucleate boiling understand in the nucleate boiling regime strongly depends on the number of active nucleation sites on the surfaces and rate of bubbles formation at each sites understand if the more number of the nucleation will be taking place in the nucleate the nucleate boiling is a, a part of the pool boiling understand nucleation boiling is a part of the pool boiling so this uh, pool boiling or nucleate boiling will be thus announced we need to announce the nucleate boiling how strongly depends on the number of active nucleation sites on the surfaces okay so we come to know what that one is okay here yes so uh, full boiling that one is the if the surface is there that one is the more number of the nucleations okay that one is the start of the uh, bubbles will be taking place that one is okay if the surface is irregularities understand if the surface is irregularities that one is then more number of the boiling will be taking place that means the bubbles formation will be taking place understand if the surface is irregularities the bubbles formation will be increases then so like that okay that means the announcement of the heat transfer in the pool boiling will be taking place that understand okay 
Hence, in the next point, they given that, therefore, the modifications that enhance the nucleation on the heating surfaces will also enhance the heat transfer in the nucleate boiling. How? That means irregularities on the heating surfaces. Okay. Yeah, the surface, so white cell, some surfaces are any 10, that's when is the uh, holes or something that one is. These holes or whites, okay, or any irregularities, understand, on the surfaces, it will enhance us that one is the a nucleate boiling, understand. More number of the bubbles formation will be taking place. Due to that, more number of the bubbles that the heat transfer rate will be increases in the cool boiling that one is, okay. So that's why here that one is the vapor liquid nucleation sites for the this uh, from this diagram you can come to know about that one is the nucleation sites for the vapor that one is okay here the point they given irregularities on the heating surfaces including the roughness and dirt if uh, if any dirt on the surfaces serve as an additional nucleation additional nucleation sites during the boiling the effect of surface roughness is observed to decay with the time. Understand? So due to the irregularities, dirt, and in any roughness of the surfaces, it will enhance the heat transfer rate in the nucleation boiling, that is in the whole boiling that is. Okay? So next point. How oh, this, uh, here, that one is the here, this uh, liquid, here you see this diagram, liquid here, vapor, Four, four means that means the hole, understand? So it, it may be any tunnel, okay? It may be any tunnel, that means. So through like this, the sun is the, if any irregularities, dirt or any surface roughnesses on the surfaces, it will enhance the heat transfer rate in the nucleate boiling. So such that it will in turn enhance the heat transfer in the a full boiling, that means. Okay, surface that provide the enhanced heat transfer in the nucleate boiling is permanently are being manufactured. We can permanently manufacture this one is okay, permanently manufacture and are available in the market also. That one is okay for any research purposes. Any research purposes, uh, uh, if you want to know about that one, is the um, how heat transfer rate will be increases in the full boiling. Surface repressions will be reduction is the major modification the surface surface or sometimes of the holes who can uh, dig the hole in the surfaces it will enhance the heat transfer rate uh, in the full boiling that one is okay so heat transfer can be enhanced by the factor up to ten during the nucleate boiling and the critical heat flux by the factor three so the five the factor three we can enhance the critical heat flux also and enhances the, uh, that one is called as the heat transfer rate in the nucleate boiling that one is, okay? So here the graph we show that one is excess temperature that one is, okay? That one is the, how the, if the surface roughness increases, how that one is the uh, heat flux will be increases. Heat flux is nothing but that one is a heat transfer rate per unit area will be increases that one is, okay? So uh, naturally, they will not ask the these questions, but you should know what that one is the theoretically. Okay. So next, uh, external forced convection boiling. Understand external forced convection boiling. How that one is the external uh, forced convection boiling that one is occurs. In the last time they ask about the definitions only they ask uh, external forced convection boiling that one is. The flow boiling, flow boiling is called as the external post convection boiling. What is the flow boiling? Flow boiling, if the taking the pipe, pipe of that one is the uh, pipe and uh, through this pipe, water is flowing that one is, how the water will be flowing? That is due to the a pump or any external aid, okay? The water will be flowing. Around the surface of the pipe, the heating will be taking place that one is, and so due to the increases in the excess temperature, the boiling of the water will be taking place by flowing. So this is called as a, a flow boiling that is, okay? So external, this is also called as external post convection boiling that is. In the flow boiling, the
the fluid is forced to move by an external source such as a pump as it is undergoes a phase change process understand phase change means that is converting liquid to the vapor that is the boiling in this case exhibits the combined effect of convection and pool boiling okay so this one is the combined so combined effects of the convection and the pool boiling so this one is the flow boiling f l o w flow boiling is classified as external and internal flow boiling external means certain is flow over the plate understand external means certain is the flow over the plate internal means certain is the flow inside that is through the pipe that is nothing that nothing else is there okay so flow boiling is classified as either external flow or internal okay like that the combustion internal combustion external combustion internal combustion means that it is it's happened in the cylinder okay so ic engine cylinder external heating means that it is a furnace external combustion that is in the furnace like that so here here also the flow boiling is classified as either external or internal flow boiling flow boiling that's an is the definition of the flow boiling means that it is the water which is flow in the pipe due to the external agency as called as a pump and the heating will be taking place through the surface of the water pipes hence the boiling will be taking places in the pipe itself that is called as a flow boiling okay here they given that it is the uh, external flow the higher the velocity higher the nucleate boiling heat fluxes and critical heat fluxes in the external flow so external flow means certain is called as a flow over the plate understand so higher in this external flow higher the velocity velocity is higher and higher the nucleate boiling heat flux and critical flux heat flux is also higher that means okay you can show here that means fire then in the flow by internal flow means flow through pipe understand so two phase flow in the two exhibits the different flow boiling regimes depending on the relative amounts of the liquid and the vapor phases understand okay so typical flow regimes liquid so here that one is the flow through pipe here that one is the so whenever the here the pipe and the liquid is flowing through the pipe and that one is the the heating will be taking place around the surface of the water pipe okay water pipe on the both sides so that one is the a flow boiling will be at a certain rate. Uh, typical flow regimes so in the flow boiling so again slug flow and lar flow bubbly flow liquid flow mist flow and vapor single phase flow you don't bother about these things that is just you remember the definitions about the a uh, flow boiling that is okay so these are the very that's your uh, definitions only they will ask that means okay so this is the flow boiling that is okay flow boiling oh, so what is that one is a bubbly flow and what is the slug flow what is the liquid single flow phase flow and what is the annular flow what is the mist flow and what is the vapor single phase flow so you can go through all these things certain is the uh, how that is the flow regimes occurs in the internal flow okay internal so flow that one is okay these are the what is called as the external flow internal flow so then how the heat transfer rate will be increases in the pool boiling that one is okay so now i will stop here okay so that one is in the next classes we'll be using the critical heat flux and what is called as a heat fluxes in the nucleate boiling how to calculate the critical heat flux and heat fluxes in the nucleate boiling that one is a, if it is not given the excess temperature suppose that one is the surface temperature uh, you need to calculate okay so so how to calculate the surface temperature in the next classes we discuss about these things that one. if you have any doubt you can raise the hands or you can ask the questions that one is